Welcome to lesson 10.7. In this video, we will be exploring alternating series. An alternating series is a series in which the sign of the terms alternates between positive and negative. Let's take a look at some examples of alternating series. First, we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n. Let's plug in a few terms to see if we can see what's actually happening right here. So if we plug in n equals 1 for our first term, we're going to have negative 1 to the power of 1, so that makes a negative 1, times 1 over 1. So that first term is going to be a negative 1. Then if we plug in n equals 2, we would have negative 1 squared, which is going to make a positive 1, times 1 over 2. So this next term is going to be plus 1 half. Then if we plug in n equals 3, we have negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1 times 1 over 3 is going to be a minus 1 third. And this pattern is going to continue. We're going to have plus 1 fourth, minus 1 fifth, plus 1 sixth, etc. Notice that this looks extremely similar to the harmonic series. We have that 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, etc. Except we are alternating the sign of the terms each time. Now another way that we could have an alternating series is we have negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times 1 over n. Let's figure out what's going on here. Plug in a positive 1 and we would have negative 1 to the power of 1 plus 1, or negative 1 squared, which makes positive 1, times 1 over 1. So we're starting out positive. But then our next term, if we plug in a 2 right here, we would have 2 plus 1, negative 1 to the power of 2 plus 1, that's still negative 1, because that's negative 1 cubed, times 1 over 2 is going to make a negative 1 half. And then we would go plus 1 third, minus 1 fourth, etc. Notice that it's similar to this one, but we're starting out positive and then going negative. But this is still an alternating series. This first portion right here, this negative 1 to the power of n or negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 controls the fact that our series is, in fact, alternating. And then this portion over here, the 1 over n, which we're going to be referring to as the a sub n later, is what controls the magnitude of our terms. Let's take a look at this third example. This one might not look like an alternating series, but let's take a look at its behavior. We have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of cosine pi n times 1 over n. For the first term, we would be plugging in a 1 right here, so cosine of a plane pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1, so we have negative 1 times 1 over 1. That's going to make a negative 1 for the first term. When we plug in n equals 2, we'll be dealing with the cosine of 2 pi. The cosine of 2 pi is 1, so we have 1 times 1 half. That's going to make positive 1 half, and notice that it's acting very, very similar to this top series up here. The terms are identical. We've just swapped out this negative 1 to the power of n with a cosine of pi n. And that makes sense, because cosine is an oscillating function, so we can do that. So in this case, the cosine pi n is what's making our terms alternate, and the 1 over n is determining the magnitude of our terms. Now, in order to determine whether an alternating series converges or diverges, we can use what's called the alternating series test. The alternating series test states that if a sub n is greater than 0, and a sub n is this portion right here, so the non-alternating portion of the series, then the alternating series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n times a sub n, and the series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times a sub n converge if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals 0, so this is the first condition, and a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n for all n. So we have two conditions here. The first condition that we need to meet in order to prove convergence for an alternating series is this one. The limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, the non-alternating portion of the series, must be equal to 0. And a sub n plus 1 needs to be less than or equal to a sub n for all n. What does this really mean? Well, this means that the sequence a sub n must be non-increasing. So the next term, so if we were looking at a sub n, maybe a sub 3, and then we were looking at a sub 4, a sub 4 would have to be less than or equal to a sub 3. So it could be either decreasing or staying the same, but it can't be increasing. Now, the vast majority of the time, we're just going to verify that a sub n is decreasing because this meets that criteria. So if we can prove that a sub n is decreasing, we know that this condition is met. Let's try an example. Determine the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n times 1 over n. Notice that this is the same series that we were looking at up here, so we already know that this is going to be an alternating series. In this case, we're going to define a sub n as 1 over n, because that is the non-alternating portion of our series. In order to prove convergence for this, we would need to take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n and verify that that's equal to 0. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. 
As we continue to plug in bigger and bigger numbers, we're going to get closer and closer to zero. So one of our conditions is met. Then we also need to prove that 1 over n, or a sub n, is going to be decreasing. Now, one way that you could do this is by taking the derivative and verifying that your derivative is negative for the values that you, that you care about. However, when we get into more complex functions, this, this method is not the fastest. So if you are able to just look at this 1 over n and verify that this is in fact decreasing, you can just write this is decreasing. We know that 1 over n is going to be decreasing because if we plug in bigger and bigger numbers for the denominator, that's going to make our fraction smaller and smaller. So we'll just write is decreasing. Since we've met those two conditions, we know that the alternating series is going to converge. So I'll write this series converges by the alternating series test. Determine the convergence or divergence of each series. The first series that we're looking at is the series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 over 2n plus 2. The thing that's going to make our series alternate is this negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. That means that our other thing, the a sub n, is going to be this 2n plus 2. But it's not just a plain 2n plus 2, it's really going to be a 1 over 2n plus 2. So when we're trying to determine convergence, we need to prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of our a sub n is equal to 0, and that a sub n is going to be decreasing. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2n plus 2. This is equal to 0. Then let's verify that a sub n is decreasing. If we continue to plug in larger and larger numbers for the denominator, for instance, if we were to plug in a 1, we'd have 1 fourth, a 2, we'd have 1 sixth, that's going to continue to produce smaller and smaller numbers. So we know that this is going to be decreasing. So the series converges by the alternating series test, since we've met both of these criteria. All right, let's determine the convergence or divergence of this next series. We're looking at the series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times n over n plus 5. Notice that this is the part of the series that's going to make the terms alternate between positive and negative. So what's left over? Well, if we remove this, we would just be left with n over n plus 5. So that, in this case, is going to be our a sub n. Now, in order to determine whether the series converges, we have to take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of that a sub n, so of n over n plus 5. Now, notice that in this case, the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same. So we're just going to take our leading coefficients. 1 over 1 is equal to 1. Now, this is not equal to 0. Since one of the conditions to determine convergence by the alternating series test has not been met, we will say that this series diverges. And by what test does it diverge? Well, this looks very, very similar to the nth term test, which we covered in a previous video. So we could say that this diverges by the nth term test, because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0. Here's another example, and we're still trying to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. This looks like an alternating series, because I have this negative 1 to the power of n. That's what's going to cause my series to be alternating. What's left over is my a sub n, which in this case is going to be 1 over rad n. First, we need to verify that the limit as n approaches infinity of that a sub n, or 1 over rad n, is equal to 0. That's true, because as we plug in larger numbers here, we're going to be getting 1 over huge number, which gets closer and closer to 0. Then we need to verify that 1 over n, or rather 1 over rad n, since that's our a sub n, is going to be decreasing. This is true, because if we plug in a 1 here, we would have 1 over 1, which is just a 1. Plug in a 2, we have 1 over rad 2, that's a smaller fraction. Then we would have 1 over rad 3, that's an even smaller fraction. So we can see that this function is going to be decreasing. Since both of these conditions are met, we can say that this series converges by the alternating series test. Here's another example. We're looking at the series from n equals 1 to infinity of cosine pi n times n over n squared. In this case, you might not be able to immediately recognize this one as an alternating series, but think back to that introduction where we realize that if we have cosine of pi n, that's going to be our alternator. It's what's going to make the terms of our series be positive and then negative and positive and negative. So what's left over is our a sub n, which is n over n squared. In order to use the alternating series test, we need to verify that the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n squared, that a sub n, is equal to zero. Now, this is true because this is the same thing as 1 over n, and the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n is equal to 0. We also need to verify that n over n squared is going to be decreasing. 
One way that you could do this is by taking the derivative. Or if you are able to just think about this one and think about, well, if I have my function 1 over n, that's going to look something like this. 1 over n looks like that. And that's always going to be decreasing. So we can say n over n squared is decreasing. This means that both of the conditions for the alternating series test were met. So we will say that this series converges by the alternating series test. Now we'll try some multiple choice questions. The alternating series test can be used to determine convergence for which of the following series. Notice that it said specifically determining convergence, so we're determining which of these converge by the alternating series test. To determine convergence with the alternating series test, we need two conditions to be true. First, we need the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, the non-alternating portion of our series, to be equal to zero. Now, we also need the a sub n terms to be non-increasing. To make that a bit simpler, we could say that a sub n needs to be decreasing. So for series number one, let's take a look and first find the non-alternating portion of the series. We have the negative 1 to the power of n plus 1, and that numerator is what's going to make our series alternate. But we have this n factorial on the bottom. So if we have 1 over n factorial as our a sub n, that means that we need to determine the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n factorial and make sure that that's equal to 0. As n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as we take the factorial of 3 and then 4 and then 5, that is going to make a bigger and bigger and bigger denominator, which means that this limit will be equal to 0. We also need to verify that 1 over n factorial is going to be decreasing. That is also true because our denominator is going to increase as we increase n. So we may use the alternating series test to determine convergence for this first series. For the second series, this is the alternating portion, and the other portion is 2n over 40n minus 5. So we have a sub n is equal to 2n over 40n minus 5. Let's first take the limit as n approaches infinity of that a sub n. So this would be equal to 2 fortieths, or 1 twentieth. This is not equal to 0, so that means that this condition is not met. So we cannot use the alternating series test to determine convergence for series 2. What about for series 3? Here's the alternating portion, and the other portion, the a sub n, is 1 over 2 rad n. If we take the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2 rad n, that will be equal to 0, because this is going to be increasing every time we increase n. Now, we also know that 1 over 2 rad n will be decreasing. Therefore, we can determine that series 3 converges. So C is the correct answer choice. Series 1 and series 3 converge by the alternating series test. If the series from n equals 1 to infinity of cosine pi n times a sub n converges, which of the following must be true? Notice that this is an alternating series because the cosine pi n makes a series alternate. So that means that our remaining portion, we just have that a sub n. Now, in order to make an alternating series converge, we're essentially being asked what are the conditions of the alternating series test. We need the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n to be equal to 0, and we need a sub n to be non-increasing. So either staying the same or decreasing. So we can automatically eliminate choices C and D because that says the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0. So which of these options is correct? If we know that a sub n plus 1, which would be the next term in the series, is going to be less than the previous term, that means that our series is going to be decreasing. So if we had a sub n, let's just say we had a sub 2, and then this one would have to be a sub 3. If a sub 3, the next term, is less than or equal to a sub 2, and then that would mean that a sub 4 is less than or equal to a sub 3, a sub 5 less than or equal to a sub 4, etc., that means that our a sub n is going to be non-increasing. So choice A is correct. Now the reason why they have this line underneath here, why it's not just a less than, why it's a less than or equal to, is because we could have our a sub n terms staying the same. And in that case, we would still be able to use the alternating series test. a sub n doesn't necessarily need to be decreasing, it just needs to be non-increasing. It could be staying the same. Which statement is true about the series from n equals 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 times 3 times the sine of 90n plus 6 over n squared? So notice that in this series, it's going to be an alternating series because we have this negative 1 to the power of n plus 1, which is going to make our terms alternate between being positive and negative. Now, that means that the residual part is a sub n, so our a sub n is equal to 3 sine of 90n plus 6 over n squared. Now, in order to apply the alternating series test to determine that this series converges, we need to show that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to 0, 
and that a sub n is decreasing, or at least that it's non-increasing. We can do this with the graphing calculator, since it is a calculator multiple choice question. So I'm going to graph this function first. I'm just going to graph my a sub n, and I'm going to put x's instead of n's in here. And here's the graph of my a sub n function. So notice that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero because we see our function getting closer and closer to zero, but this function is not always decreasing. And if we don't have a function that is non-increasing, we can't apply the alternating series test. So we know that option A is not correct. It doesn't converge by the alternating series test because we couldn't apply the alternating series test. Now, part B says the alternating series test cannot be applied because the terms of the sequence do not alternate. That's false. The terms do alternate because of this portion. Part C says the alternating series test cannot be applied because the terms of the sequence are increasing for some values n being greater than or equal to 2. This is true. Notice how we sometimes have the graph increasing. So it decreases from here to here, and then it starts increasing, decreasing, increasing. In those increasing sections, we can't have those if we want to apply the alternating series test. 